This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to EA Sports WRC. For those who don't know, EA Sports WRC was released last week Thursday. But of course, last week Thursday, Gran Turismo 7 decided to release Spec 2 as well. So my apologies for this being a week late. I don't think anybody really cares in the grand scheme of things, so fair enough. So I wanted to discuss this game's performance on the Steam Deck because it was originally we heard that this game, Codemasters, had moved from their proprietary game engine to Unreal Engine, not 5, but 4, which has created some interesting issues. Um, I.e. if you compare this game against Dirt Rally 2.0, it actually doesn't look as great, subjectively speaking. And it reintroduces shader compilation stutter, so no matter what console, well, no matter what thing you're playing on, you're going to have some frame drops just sporadically due to just the shaders needing to compile, which is a little bit unfortunate. But in the little bit that I've played this on Steam Deck, it's really interesting to see how this game performs in its various preset quality, and when you compare it up against, respectively, the different AI upscalers uh, between, you know, FSR or the standard temporal one, you know, a lot of interesting results there. So let us take a look at some of that. So I'll apologize ahead of time. You guys are going to get so, so tired of seeing this stage, but it is part of benchmarking. If you've got different quality presets, you want to make sure that you have as similar of a setting as possible when comparing settings. So we have the first rally stage of the Junior WRC. And this here is, as I'll take a look at the settings, we are in 720p, technically full screen, epic anti-aliasing, V-Sync is on, four times anastropic filtering, and this is the interesting part. This in general is the best performance that I've been able to get between you know performance and quality on the Steam Deck. So we've got the Fidelity FX upscaler, and it is under the quality preset, but that's really um, a little bit of a moot point because we have the dynamic resolution on, which is 50 at low and 100 at max. Of course, this is running the low preset. That is why we're getting as good as frames as we are currently. We're sitting at 93 to 97% GPU usage in the low 60% of the CPU. Of course, we have about mid to high 40 frame rate, which is, for the Steam Deck, not bad. I used to get really uptight about frame rate when I first got the Steam Deck. I wanted to make sure that pretty much everything was running 60 frames, even if it was absolutely the worst looking quality possible. Then I tried getting Unbound, Need for Speed Unbound, running on Steam Deck at 60 frames, and you can do it. Uh, just don't go to a link up. <laughs> but yeah, it just it looks horrible when you're running at 60 frames. So Steam Deck, as many Steam Deck users have noticed from here, on out, uh, if you cap at, I don't know, 40 hertz, 40 frames, doesn't look too bad. And it has a pretty good balance between battery life and uh, being able to use the high end of the performance here. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, compare and contrast, starting with the AI upscalers. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because the next preset qualities the only reason or the only way how they're going to work is because we get that extra little performance boost provided by the AI upscaler. So to begin with, again, everything is pretty much identical to what we had before. Of course, the upscaler here is off and off. So everything there, dynamic resolution and the upscaler are both off and advanced, advanced graphics we have low, not ultra low or anything else. It's just low. 
So the reason why we have AI upscalers is because, well, if you look at the graphics here, honestly, in 720p, it doesn't look too bad in comparison to what we were just running before. And actually, in most cases, this actually looks a little bit of a sharper image than with the AI upscalers on. However, if you take a look at the performance here, we are at the mid to high 90s of GPU usage. So the AI upscalers save us a couple of percentage points there. Our CPU is just about the same, but the frames are losing, on, in all honesty, like, uh, I don't know, about 10% there. We used to be in the high 40s to low 50s, and now we're in the low 40s to mid 40s. So a, honestly, if you're in handheld mode, you're not gonna really notice the difference much there. But when you are in handheld mode and you have AI upscalers on, all of this here, you can see every tiny last bit of detail because we're on 720p and going into a 1080p monitor. So we're just able to see all of this kind of quality or lack thereof because it is in low. So the lack of a sharp image because if you're using Steam Deck in handheld mode, may not be as much of a concern. So keeping that in mind, the AI upscaler does reduce quality a little bit because it is taking an image and then finding ways that it can optimize it for better performance. And then the dynamic resolution scaler, kind of the same thing where it just renders something in a lower resolution and then scales it up to the resolution that you're using. Um, so if we go to, because this is Steam Deck, it has a AMD graphics card. We'll do Fidelity FX for AMD's FSR. And we'll do, we'll start with Ultra Performance. Going to give you a basic idea of that. So looking at AMD's FSR in Ultra Performance mode without any dynamic scaler, or rather dynamic resolution option on, this is just FSR Ultra Performance. You can tell it's basically running like a 3DS game on a 1080p monitor. It does not look all that great. And as you can tell, there are a couple of things going on here. The detail of everything is just super fuzzy. It's super noisy. But if you take a look at some of the uh, performance here, we're in the high 40s, low 50s for frame rate. We are actually between 80 and 90 percent usage of the GPU, which is incredible. Actually, we're going all the way up to 97 here. Of course, it's this moment here right before the water. A little bit of a lag spike there. So, I mean, with, with the AI upscaler, there are a couple of things that you may notice here. One of the big noisiest artifacts that you can tell is that kind of ghosting image that you get there off of the side mirrors there which is very much so a trademark of the AI upscaler and I mean as much as it works even in handheld mode you're going to notice this so I would advise against the ultra performance so we'll go to basic graphics and we'll go to the other side of the spectrum we'll go to quality and immediately you'll notice a difference of course performance wise we're just top end using all of the gpu pretty much and we're in the low we're in the high 30s or the low 40s as far as frame rate goes but you can tell that the details are a lot more clear they're a lot more there which is Something that you want to see. You want to be able to see the video game that you're playing. Of course, the interesting thing is when we've got some of these weird lag spikes and you hit corners, I've noticed that a bug with this game is that the audio cuts out. And I'm not sure if that's an issue with like a lag spike and the game just trying to process too much information all at the same time and it just cuts out the audio or if it's something else going on. I'm not entirely sure, but that is a notable bug. But again, in all honesty, quality mode of FSR makes the game run so much better than FSR off. And we'll actually be able to get a little bit of performance back when we turn on dynamic resolution here in a moment. 
All right, so back again, dynamic resolution on. We'll just kind of leave these settings here. Min 50, max of 100. So as you can tell here, dynamic resolution, as I was, may have made mention before, it basically takes certain parts of the image, renders it in a lower resolution, and then upscales it using FSR or the AI upscaler technology to the resolution that we're at. By doing so, it gives us a little bit of performance back, but of course uh, degrades the image ever so slightly in a couple of aspects. Of course, that very trademark ghosting is back, as you can tell with the side mirrors. However, we are no longer in the low 30s of the frame rate. We're now in the mid to high of the 40s, which just by adding F just by adding dynamic resolution back is crazy. Of course, when you're looking at the GPU, we're only saving in a couple of uh, percentage points here or there. But overall, this this does seem to run so much better. And the thing that's very interesting is that here on out, when we take a look at our preset quality, whether it be medium, high, or ultra, the lower the frames, the less response time we have to react to certain situations. And in rally, since they're, we're going around so many corners, they're blind and you're going over jumps and you have very limited traction control, you need to have the highest response time possible. So from here on out, we're going to start losing our driving ability, what little we had to begin with. So this is on medium. As you can tell, there isn't that much of a difference, and that's mainly because we're still in 720p resolution. Uh, as you can tell, the image is a little bit more fuzzier. It seems like we have a little bit more ghosting going on with these side mirrors, but more notably, our GPU is being ran the hell up. It is really not dropped below 96% usage, and our frame rate respectively shows that it is working harder too. We're in the mid to high 30s, not really ever peaking above 39 frames. So as far as racing game goes, 30 frames kind of depends because they're, if you're using like an RP, if you're playing like an RPG game like Starfield, yeah, 30 frames, fine. Racing games, it's a little bit on the edge. And like I was saying before, rally games, you, you really need a little bit of a higher frame rate because you do need that additional response time. So you don't do stuff like this. And here we are in the high quality preset. Again, this is all still using FSR quality and with the dynamic resolution. High preset, we are now in the low 20 frames up into the mid 20s and it is i mean when you take a look at the graphics it looks i mean slightly better than medium but we're because it's still 720p and we're using the dan dynamic uh resolution and the ai upscaler there we're still getting like a slightly more fuzzier image and our poor gpu is just topping out at 99 percent there and it's just not a great experience, if I'm going to be honest. I mean, it is technically playable if you're masochistic and like playing games at low 20 to mid 20 frames. I mean, sure, go for it. But in my mind, that's kind of the result you're going to get is you're going to get kind of a train wreck. And if... Uh, the high preset, high quality preset wasn't bad enough. It technically runs ultra as well. It hasn't gone above 19 frames though. Oh, there it went, it went up to 20. <laughs> and again, 99% C uh, GPU usage. Oh, there we are, now we're into 22 frames. But like I was saying, it's it's like trying to play a first person shooter in like low frames. It's just, it's possible, but it's just not fun. It's not really playable because you can't, you can't react to things happening. So again, it's possible. 
I wouldn't recommend it. So there we are. There is the benchmark of pretty much everything you could ever ask for and more, really. Of course, we're not going into the minute details of going through each and every option. But as far as the Steam Deck goes, as far as the preset options go, I really cannot recommend anything other than using FSR quality mode with a dynamic resolution attached. And of course, this being the low preset here. Like I said, we're getting mid 40 frames a second. We're definitely pushing our GPU, pushing into the mid 90s. But I mean, all in all, like this is a great game that you'll be able to just kind of sit down on the couch and just kind of play through and enjoy yourself. And that's ultimately what we're here to do is enjoy gaming. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got some more Gran Turismo coming up eventually, I'm pretty sure. So stay tuned for when I finally get through doing the Masters Super License Test. That's going to be an absolute headache. But a joy for you guys to watch me suffer through it. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Take care. Bye.